Um, last time, this is where we got last time, uh, with the exception that I added some nice comments to try to make it clear what was going on. Um, we got as far as to make a recirculating delay network, and I demonstrated that you could consider this either as a thing that does things in time or a thing that does filtering, which is to say changing the frequency content of a sound, in other words, making some frequencies loud and others less loud. So to, to, uh, to be overly pedantic, uh, I'll just go ahead and re-demonstrate that quickly. So here's noise, and here is noise recirculating so it's a recirculating delay. I'm going to recirculate the delay. Oh, the delay will be 10 milliseconds long, and I'll recirculate it multiplying by some number that's less than 1. So we're going to multiply now by 88%. And now what we're going to hear is a tone. And that tone, uh, if I checked it on a piano, which I don't have one of, uh, right here uh, would, would be at 100 hertz because um, 10 millisecond period corresponds to 100 cycles per second. Or to put it another way, anything that comes in to this thing is going to come out and then come out again at a 10 milliseconds later and almost as loud and then again 10 milliseconds yet later. And so everything that comes in is going to be, it's going to come out almost repeating itself every 10 milliseconds, which will therefore sound like a thing that's at 100 hertz. And that would be true for delay times that, uh, say, go uh, up to some 30 milliseconds, or tones that go down to some 33 hertz. You can almost say mm, down an octave there. Um, and then below that, you can't really hear a pitch anymore. You just hear some kind of thing in time. So now, getting rid of the noise and turning on the famous microphone. Um, is this going to work now? I didn't test this. Uh, hello? Oh, yeah. So now this is a nice recirculating delay with voice coming in. And what you hear is echoes every 84 milliseconds, which is, what, 12 times a second or something like that, which you hear as, a, as an amount of time and not as a frequency. If I make those echoes be close to each other in time, like 20 milliseconds away from each other, then you no longer hear that as a series in time, but instead you hear it as a nice pitch. And now we get a sort of which is just me talking through a comb filter. A comb filter is just another word for a recirculating, or anyway, for a delay network that who's, uh, that likes frequencies that are multiples of a certain fundamental frequency. In this case, this comb filter likes frequencies that are multiples of 50, because 50 hertz corresponds to 20 milliseconds here. And it's called a comb filter because if you look at the frequency response of this thing considered as a filter, there's a peak every 50 hertz regularly, and that looks like a comb of some sort. Um, looking forward, uh, this is this and better ways of, or rather, elaborating this idea in the future, we'll be able to design arbitrary filters uh, with desired frequency responses. But right now, all I'm doing is reinforcing the notion that this thing can be considered as a filter, which is a thing which will take any sinusoid and give you a sinusoid out of the same frequency, but perhaps of a different amplitude. Um, that's a filter. Or you can consider it as just a delay network, which is a thing which makes echoes. And those two things are really the same thing, except that, uh, well, they're psychologically different, and the parameters that you put into it might make it act more like the one thing or like the other, or seem more like the one thing or the other. So, um, yeah, so there's that. Oh, let's not even worry about that anymore. Um, now what I want to do, oh yes, I do want to say one thing before I leave here, which is that this is a linear time invariant network, as the engineers will call it. And what that implies is that if I put a nice sinusoid in of any given frequency, like 50 hertz, nah, 100 hertz, uh, out will come a nice sinusoid of the same frequency that went in. 
there's no there's nothing there's no way that a recirculating delay network or any kind of delay network that ha that doesn't have time varying stuff in it can take a sinusoid of any given frequency and put out a sinusoid of some other frequency. If you if you pump it with you know, if, if you if you put a color of light into a filter or into a prism or into any other optics like that, you get the same color light out if it's monochromatic. And that is a thing which um, that's a thing which we count on because it makes it possible for well, your ears seem to like to segregate sounds that come in by frequency, and so if something sort of leaves frequencies where they are, doesn't make new frequencies, doesn't make different frequencies out of incoming frequencies, then you can say that um, that your ear might hear a relationship, a very clear relationship between what goes in and what goes out. Maybe. Um, I'm hopeful that that's true anyway. Now what I want to do is uh, get into some uh, practical stuff that you can do with delay networks. Um, the first thing that I want to comment on is uh, this. Let's see. What I'm going to do is do a save as and start all over again. Um, because for this next example, I actually want to make a non-recirculating uh, del delay. Uh, and instead, what I want it to do is uh, be something where I can change the delay time. So we'll call it del delay time change dot pd. There it is. And now we're going to make it non-recirculating, which means I don't care about the gain anymore, as it turns out. I don't care about listening to the original sound. I just want to take the original sound and throw it into the delay line. Oh, let's rename the delay line. Just so you can have both patches open at once if you want. We don't need this pitch calculation anymore. Hey. Go away. Whatever that is down there, get rid of it. Okay, and then we're going to read with the delay time that's given. And then we're just going to listen to it, like that. All right, so am I doing anything stupid? Find out soon. And to, uh, so I'll do the brutal thing of putting a sinusoid in. In fact, I'll give it a nice 440 hertz sinusoid. And now we hear a 440. Very good. Uh, actually, Make that a little bit louder at the mixer so that so that I don't have to do anything funny. Okay, and now we're going to change the delay time. Okay, so a 440 hertz sinusoid comes in and you hear it 20 milliseconds late. You don't hear the fact that you heard it 20 milliseconds late. What's coming out is a perfectly clean 440 hertz sinusoid, except that the phase is different, and that's just what that is. Now we start changing the delay time, though, and we get something else, which is ugliness. And the reason for that ugliness is very simple. It's just that if you change the delay time, it's the same thing as if you had a, uh, if you were reading from a wavetable and you suddenly change the location of the wavetable that you were reading from, that will make a discontinuous change in the amplitude or in the signal. And you will hear that discontinuous change as a click. All right. Uh, just, just to, um, yeah, just to throw out a warning. Of course, if I were listening to noise, I could change this delay time, and you can't hear the click because. There's no correlation between one sample of white noise and the next sample anyway, so the fact that you change the place that you listen to it from doesn't sound like anything different from how the noise sounds to start with. Uh, I'm telling you this because you're going to make networks and they're going to sound great because you're going to try them with some noisy signal like a, you know, an overdriven electric guitar or something like that, and you're not going to know that you're actually doing this to your signal until someone with better ears or more experienced ears than you points it out to you or something horrible like that. So test your stuff with sinusoids, which are the most punishing signal that you could possibly put through a thing, even though it's the simplest signal too, so that you can tell whether your, your patch is clean or dirty. Oh yeah, let me get rid of this comment, which is superfluous in this one too. And now, so uh, 
So what if you wanted to be able to, okay, so make an application. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nice incoming sound. I'm going to listen to it. Oh, great. I'll do it here for clarity's sake. I, I'll do this with a microphone now just to annoy you all. Hey, come here. Okay, now what we're going to do is take the incoming sound, which is the microphone. I'm going to talk into the microphone and see if it's amplifying my voice. Okay, right. Slight delay, but that's all right. And now I'm going to give you a delay, delayed copy of it. Hello. And this is. Now it's now obviously far too late. So here's my voice, and here's my voice. Okay. But now I'm going to say, can I change this delay time continuously and get a, uh, sorry, change this delay time with a mouse and get away with it? So now so I want now a different, different delay. delay. And, well, no, actually, no, actually. Never mind. I thought it was going to be more forgiving than that, but, but my voice is already low enough and, and dull enough that, um, that changing the delay time is very, very bad and nasty. So, um, so I didn't succeed in demonstrating something where you could change the delay time and think it was clean when it in fact wasn't. Maybe this would be this. I, know. I can do that, and you don't hear the problem. All right, so anyway, if you want to have a delay line where you can change the time, then you have to work. And the work that you have to do is really better described as PD lore than it is described as anything theoretical. So now we're going to enter into PD lore. Actually, this is computer music lore, because if you were using some other uh, software from PD, this would also be necessary, and you would do almost exactly the same thing. And the same thing is this. Oh. Before I, before I do it right, let me do it wrong another way. It's always fun to do things wrong. Uh, let's, uh, let's make it change smoothly. Uh, I'm afraid I'm being repetitious here because I think I already showed you this for, for samples, but I'm going to take this thing and just line it. So we'll say pack, pack the thing with 100 milliseconds of packing, and then I'll make a nice line. And then I'll put the Dell read on. Right. Okay. Sorry, I'm really belaboring points here today, but this is okay. Belaboring. Belaboring. Point. Okay, there's a delay. There's a delay. Now I'm gonna yeah. say ah and change the delay. So ah uh, did not help. Okay. The reason that didn't help was because the line is an audio. Sorry, the line is not an audio signal. It's only uh, updating every 20 milliseconds, and so you're just hearing 50 problems a second instead of whatever however many problems a second I was generating with a mouse. No better. Right? So now, oh, hey, watch, watch PD do something wrong just while I'm thinking of it. Um, really, at this point, uh, I got a nice error here. This, there's a signal coming out of this line, but Del Reed doesn't want a signal. And so I got a delay here which said, sorry, I got an error message here which you don't see very often. Signal outlet connected to non-signal inlet ignored. Uh, what that means is this thing was line without a tilde, which is a control object, and I, I was able to connect it, and then I changed it to something else that it wasn't able to connect, but it didn't have the heart to disconnect it because I might want to change it back. But nonetheless, it's not working right now. This thing really should turn red and blink or something like that, but okay. And also, by the way, uh, you, ha you don't see this all the time because usually the order in which you do this is you get the object built and then you try to connect it and then PD just won't let you connect it. That's probably the correct thing to do in that kind of situation. Right? But anyway, um, so you saw that happen. So this is not going to work either. So is there a version of delay read that I could plunk a signal into? And the answer is yes, there's one called variable delay. This started out in um, a different language where this wasn't uh, such an ugly acronym. Uh, variable delay is now a, is a delay object whose input expects a signal instead of a control message. And as a result, oh well, as a consequence of that, how to say this? It does two things that delay tilde does, del read tilde does not do. The first thing is it's willing to change its delay time every single sample. 
But then there's a, another thing that immediately comes up, which is that if you're going to be changing delay times from one to another in a continuous way, actually one sample of accuracy isn't enough to make the result clean. And so uh, variable delay actually has to interpolate the incoming samples to simulate, possibly to simulate delays that are not integer number of samples. So del read tilde, the non-interpolating uh, control message delay, will always give you a delay that's actually a multiple of samples, a multiple of, of sorry, an integer number of samples. Um, and you can get pretty close to whatever delay time you want, like within 20-ish microseconds. Better than that, maybe. Uh, but variable delay, VD tilde, that one uh, will take, um, will actually make a four-point interpolation of the stuff that's in the delay line. The del delay line is actually a storage area, right? It will go and find four points and make a four-point interpolation uh, among those points to actually try to guess what the sample ought to have been that is in between the samples in the delay line that corresponds to exactly the delay that you asked for. And then, oh, so the advantage, of course, is that the, that the delay time is exact, or is as, as exact as floating point allows you to be. Uh, the disadvantage is that it costs more, there's more computation involved, and also that if you do that, then you're, um, let's see, that interpolation has its own frequency response, which is not perfectly flat. So you will not get a signal whose spectrum is exactly the same. It's, um, this, th this thing, um, because of the interpolation, will, will drop off in, in high frequencies uh, somewhat. And that's a bad thing, which you can control by raising your sample rate, but which is always going to be there whenever you interpolate. However, going back to the good stuff, now what happens when I change the delay time is it does the right stuff, which is, OK, delay, oh, right, I have to do this again. OK, we have a delay now. I'm starting to change the delay. In fact, I'm going to say, ah, uh, and change the delay. Uh, OK, so now we have a wonderful thing that can generate other pitches than the pitch that you put in. That contradicts what I said before, except what I said before was you couldn't go changing anything in the network if you want sinusoids to come in always to come out at the same frequency. And now I'm changing something. It's no longer time invariant. And as a result, that, that nice property of stuff that doesn't change in time is no longer there. And now we're making other frequencies. Well, what about that? Um, what if you, oh yeah, so let me, um, now that I've done that, I'm going to stop irritating everyone and go back to the sinusoid. Uh, let's turn this down. Turn on sinusoid, here's the sinusoid, there's 440 hertz for you again. And then if I listen to the delayed copy of it, same pitch, but of course if I change the delay time, changing the pitch. Okay. Well, that's cool. That should make you immediately think I can do all kinds of things with this. I can take, um, I can take someone who sings in a monotone and make them sing a melody. Or vice versa, I could take something that came out of a melody and turn it into a monotone or things like that. Well, you sort of can. In fact, I'm going to work toward that. Um, however, first off, it might be nice to have an idea about what that uh, what that frequency is. In other words, how would you predict what that frequency should be? Because Why would you want to do that? Uh, so that you can get whatever frequency you want out. Oh, frequency. What? Okay, so what comes out is a transposition of what goes in. So it's probably appropriate, as, as in a sampler, it's probably appropriate to talk about what kind of transposition you're getting. That's to say what kind of change in frequency or relative change in frequency. What does the frequency multiply by? That's a transposition. Um, and to make that painfully obvious, I'm going to throw in an, uh, a pair of oscillators. And you'll hear a nice interval, which will be a fifth, because I'm going to tune this one up to 660. Let's see, do we hear a fifth? Yeah. And now, when I start playing it with a delay, 
when I start messing the pitches up, you will still hear that the pitches are related to each other. It's always a fifth moving up and down in parallel. That's the same thing as saying, yeah, the frequencies all got multiplied by some constant rather, or multiplied by some number rather than maybe added to some number like a ring modulation might have done to us or something like that. Okay? Multiplied by what number is the next question? And to answer that, I have to do something a little bit more, what's the right word? A little bit more controlled than this. Right now I'm just sort of mousing uh, willy-nilly at this message box, but, um, or sorry, at this number box, but in fact what I should consider doing, oh, you know what, let's save this, oh no, it's okay. We'll say delay time, and now we have a way of making delay times up here, you know what, I'll call the delay time down here, and then I'm going to make some message boxes so I can do stuff. So I'm going to say, for instance, let's jump to 100, and go up to about, well, yeah, all right. And then let's, yeah, sorry, we'll go to a delay time of zero. Well, I can't really get down to zero, really. Hmm. Am I going to tell you all this? I'm going to go to, all right, I'm just going to cheat. Or I'm just going to ignore the problem. I'm going to go down to a delay time of zero, and I'm going to gradually go up to a delay of one second. How long am I going to do it? Take, I'll take a second to do it. Oops, sorry, that needs to be a pair. All right, and now I'm, we'll put in the nice sinusoid. Okay, so this is, all right, so this is an alternative to that. All right, so now I'm going to listen to the sinusoid. Oops, sorry, let's get rid of this one again. Okay, and now I'm going to start the delay line changing, and you all know what you're going to hear, right? Beautiful bad example. <laughs> that was not my plan. <laughs> what did I just do? I just made the delay line grow at exactly the same length. Sorry, shrink at exactly the same length that the that time was passing in such a way as I slowed the thing down to stop it entirely. Okay, this is wonderful, but this is not what I really want to do. Let's um, let's go down. Let's go up to one half second and take one second to do it. All right, and now we say, all right, now what you hear is, for the period of one second, it drops by an octave. And what if I wanted to, okay, so now you've seen two examples. One is I was able to stop it altogether, and the other is I was able to slow it down by a factor of two. Oh, why did I, why did it slow down? Well. All right, two, okay, the two, there are two moments in time here that might be appropriate to think of. One is the moment where the thing starts, and one is the moment at where it ends. I'm, I'm thinking about time in, in, I'm thinking about so-called real time, that is the time at which the sound is coming out of the delay line, All right? That's real time for us. And in real time, well, a second of real time passes while the Delay time starts at nothing and goes up to 500. All right? So, sorry, I'm not explaining this, but this, this line is being asked to, st to jump to zero and then to ramp to 500. All right? In that second of time, how much of that sinusoid do we hear? Well, at the beginning, we hear the sinusoid right when it comes out. Sorry, what am I saying? At the outset, you hear the sinusoid that is, a, that is coming in at the same moment as you're listening to it. A second later, you're listening to the sinusoid as it had been one half second earlier than that. Which is to say, only one half second after the sinusoid, after you started listening to it. So you succeeded in slowing the sinusoid down by a factor of two because you only heard the one half second of it that went into the delay line between the original time minus zero and the time a second later minus 500. Okay, 
Rather than try to explain that better, I'll make another example, which is this. Let's go to 100. Oh, wait, what's a good number? Let's go to 333 milliseconds, one third of a second. So the delay starts at zero, and then it ends up at one third of a second. So how much of the sinusoid do you hear? You hear the other two thirds of the second of the sinusoid, which is to say, which is to say, there's there's one third of a second we haven't heard yet because at the end of the of the process the delay line is a third of a second long, and so we didn't hear the last third of a second of the sinusoid. So you only got the other two thirds. So we all know what that is as an interval. It means going down a fifth. So now when I whack this, it goes down a fifth. So now if I kept on whacking this, I could get it down to a fifth and I could get to stay there, right? Sort of. Oh yeah, and while we're at it, now we have a nice tool for changing pitches. So now you can listen. Let's see. Shut this up. I'll be me. Hello. Hello. So now I'm talking. And now we're here. Uh, talking a bit below the frequency that I was really speaking at. All right. So I just made a nice, wonderful object that transposes my voice down a musical fifth. Oh yeah. And I I played you already what it sounded like when I ring modulated my voice, which which made it an inharmonic sound usually because there might be some weird interval between the voice I was speaking and the and the fre and the frequency of the ring modulator back when I was ring modulating my voice. You saw similar things when we were doing frequency modulation uh, two lectures ago. And now what you're getting is a thing which is different from that because it takes the voice and maintains the relationships between the partials that were in the voice, but moves them all down proportionally by the same amount so that their relationship stays the same, so that the so that the partials going in had frequencies at ratios of 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 and so on. And those ratios are fixed even though the, the frequencies of the partials are being multiplied each by 2 thirds. This is a favorite trick of Laurie Anderson's if you've seen her perform. Um, however, there's a little bit of a uh, problem here because if you listen, try to understand what I'm saying here, well, First off, there are clicks all the time because, of course, the delay time, I'm, I'm having to change the delay time constantly. Oh, why don't I just never stop? Why don't I just say, uh, I want the thing to go down a musical fifth and I want it to last forever. So we'll say, I don't know, we'll go on for a million milliseconds, which is uh, 20 minutes-ish, and we'll do that over three million milliseconds, which is an hour. And now I can talk for the, oh, ooh, better make the delay line real long now, right? Like instead of five seconds, maybe five, uh, I don't know how long to make this before I run out of memory, but let's just live dangerously. So now we have five million samples of delay. Oh, it hates me. It's reaching for five mil million samples worth of memory right now. Is it going to succeed, or am I going to have to give up? I hear my disk drive. <laughs> I did it. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we now have a delay line that has five million samples in it. Yeah. Okay. And of course, and of course, you hear me only with a one-second delay line because I'm only using whatever I asked for. But now. I can start giving you a lecture and it's going to be all transposed down by a phase of the wish. Except that the one terrible problem is that it's getting later and later and later. And the whole lecture now will not last. Lecture wouldn't last 80 minutes, but would last four thirds of 80 minutes if I'm computing right, which is longer than we have in this room.
Or to put it another way, well, duh, the delay time is getting longer and longer and longer. And now, just for fun, hello, we'll just give ourselves a bomb that will wake us up in a few seconds. So this is not a good way to do a pitch shift if you want to regard that as a real-time process. Right? How would you, well, okay, so maybe we should go back to the other thing and be continually resetting the delay time to smaller values. But then, of course, the smaller values, ah, but then you couldn't do it without clicking, right? So what would you do? The answer could be you change it, but you shut it up while you're changing it. And then you start, let it start off again. How do you, uh, okay, let me try to explain this better. Okay, so going back to, oh yes, and I'm going to do this two different ways too, as, as I do a little bit too much. Of, oh, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this. I don't like what this is doing to my disk drive, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go back to using a reasonable amount of memory here. Um, okay, and you didn't see this, so I'm just going to erase this from the record. Right? We're going to lose this idea. Uh, what we're going to do instead is um, make the delay line get quiet, change, change to zero, and then get louder again, and then start changing. Let's see. Let me even make a simpler example than this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... What order am I going to do this all in? Okay, here's what... Okay, so, so I'm going to show you two different things. Okay, so first off, this was cool, and we're going to save it, and then we're going to do a save as, and we're going to go back to uh, regular old, uh, how about three, delay time change, and then I'm going to do, uh, make more, I'm going to make a ridiculous file name. I'm going to use an envelope generator to change the delay time cleanly. So now we're going to go back to Dell Read. For uh, Del Reed, for uh, let's see, what's the right word? For simplicity's sake. So we no longer have the right to put this line tilde in here, and it's complaining to us. But I'm going to get rid of this, and now I'm going to go uh, to let's see, what's the right word? Now I'm going to try to, yeah. Okay, let's get let's get the number box out again. Okay, now we now we're back at the situation where let's oh, go away. Uh, where we can't change the delay time without making the noises, right? So, what if I wanted to change the delay time but not have the bad noise? Well, the answer is we mute the sound, and then once the sound is good and muted we change the delay time and then we unmute the sound. Okay, so to do that we're going to have to multiply it by a ramp generator in order to mute it. My disk drive is still churning after that 5 million point delay line I made. My computer has indigestion right now. Okay, so, uh, oh, right. And now this line, of course, we know how to turn it off. We give it a, throw it a message that says, go to zero and take some amount of time. I don't know how long, maybe 10 milliseconds. That, again, is a value that you're going to have to find depending on what kind of signal you're throwing in. And then we have a nice thing to turn it on. Okay, this is an on-off switch. Let's see if this works so far. So there is sound. Okay, idiot's delight. All right, now, so what we want to do is every time this thing changes, we want to first say zero and then change it, and then and then when we change it at the same time after it's quiet, we can then ramp the amplitude back up. All right. So what will happen is after a delay of a second, so let's get a nice delay object out. Sorry, after a delay of the... What am I saying? Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make something that does this. It mutes the thing, changes the delay time to whatever we want, and then turns it back on. All right, so... 
So whenever the number comes in, we're not going to change the delay time at all right away. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, let's see, we're going to send a, uh, yeah, just, um, sorry, this is, I'm going to be a little bit pedantic here. Um, we're going to send a bang off to this nice shut up button. Now I have this wonderful network when, which it has the property that when I try to change the delay time, it just mutes it and stays off forever, right? We don't have everything built yet. And then after a delay of 10, so we'll bang this delay of 10 and then we'll turn it back on. And now we have a wonderful patch that whenever we change the delay time, it just turns the thing off and then turns it back on, which you can hear a little bit. The only problem with this is that, well, the only problem with this is that, uh, well, first off, I can't really ramp very nicely with it because it has to mute and unmute it very, very quickly, it sounds ugly. But this is, but I can still change it like that. It's, yeah, okay, as long as I'm putting something complicated through, we'll get away with that. But it didn't actually change the delay time. I'm pulling the, I'm, uh, no, nobody's talking to the Dell read. And of course, I can't just send the delay time in right away because at the time I'm sending the delay in, it hasn't succeeded in muting yet. It sent this message to start muting, but I really need this thing to come in 10 milliseconds later after this thing has shut up. So let's, um, let's take the signal and store it, and then when the delay 10 is done, is when we send the new value of the signal delay. Hmm. All right, this is going to need a little bit of cleaning up before it's really palatable. But now we have something where we can change the delay time and it's smooth. So now, for instance, and to prove, you, to, prove to you that the delay time is actually changing, I can now use it as a real-time thing. So now you hear this nice delay, and now, oops, and now the delay goes away, and now the delay becomes a second. Oops, if I type it right, and now the delay is a second, and now the delay is a second. That's one like that. So now I can change delay times on my voice, and it won't won't make that ugly sound. But at the same time. Well, all right. That's, so this is a good thing. This is a good way if you want to make yourself a delay effect to be able to change the delay time and not have people complain at you because it sounded ugly. Right? Now, to go back, uh, the previous patch, I actually got the variable delay object out and was showing off Doppler shift. And then I was saying, oh, it would be cool if you could use that Doppler shift thing to, to make a pitch shifter. That's to say a thing where I could sing in at some pitch and out would come continuous singing in another pitch without having a delay time that was gradually either growing or shrinking. So let's apply this principle to a, to a variable delay line. Ah, right. So the variable delay, delay is changing all the time, and you can change the delay just fine without having badness, but the thing that causes badness is when you cause the delay time to change discontinuously, which you had to do periodically. So getting the Okay, so let's see. Now, what I need next is actually closer to this patch than the previous one, so I'll start with this one. Okay, and now we're going to make a prototype, a proto pitch shifter. Let's keep that hyphen two. Is that number three? That's number four now. We're being productive today. We, have, we might actually get up to five or six patches. OK, so now what we're going to do is go back to variable delay uh, land. And that means we need to drive it with a nice line tilde object. So this is no longer just going to bash a, va a discontinuously changing value into a float. Instead, we have a nice line tilde. And now what we're going to do, you know, I'm this, the patch that I'm now going to make is for pedagogical purposes, and I would not be likely to use this. I'm going to show you how to do this better. So what I have to tell you is I'm going to do something deliberately that's sort of okay, but I'm going to, 
but this is going to be replaced by something substantially better in a few minutes. Okay, so so the not quite so great thing is this. So we we had this nice message box. For instance, I had zero and I grew up to 333 in a second. And this had the property that, so I'm going to just check this and make sure I'm still where I was. So here we are, and do. Okay. So now we have the thing that takes my word, bashes it down a fifth, musical fifth. Oh, yeah. I have to remember, by the way, to tell you how to compute these numbers to do your own intervals, because not every interval is a fifth, right? And now what we're going to do is, well, everything was cool except that, going back to the sinusoid to demonstrate this, um, you hear a click every time you, well, you might hear a click, depending on the phase, every time you reset this thing. So that's bad. But, of course, we now know what to do about that, which is we just... Okay, shut this up while I work. Uh, we just uh, send off a bang to the ooh that's bad because that's going to make two bangs let's um let's g give ourselves a nice button yeah so the button is going to mute the thing and it's going to set this new thing. Ooh, no, it's not going to do that. That's going to happen after a delay, isn't it? And then the button is going to set the delay off. So now what's happening is, let's see if I can make this readable. Yeah, it's not great. Okay, so now whenever the whenever I press the button, what happens immediately is the line until it gets muted, and then what happens after 10 milliseconds is I re- start this process of changing the delay line continuously and I unmute the output. Right? And now I have a bad but partly serviceable pitch shifter which can shift us down a nice musical fifth. Except, yeah, and of course if I forget to keep whacking the button eventually it goes back up. By the way, uh, no matter what I put in here, if I keep going in this way, I will never do anything other than, well, yeah. this is true. I can get, I, you know, I can transpose down in a clear way and get all sorts of intervals transposed downward. Oh yeah, I'm at 200 then. There's a musical, there's a perfect third for you. Uh, how would I make the thing transpose up? You can't go down from zero. So rather than do this, you would start at some value like 200 and ramp down to zero over time so that the value, so that the length of the delay line is decreasing instead of increasing. And then we get, anyone want to guess what interval we're going to get now? A perfect minor third up. Okay, so why did it go up? The delay time decreased. It, it decreased from 200 down to zero. So what we oh, so over the period of one second, we quit hearing something that was 200 milliseconds old and gradually got to where we were hearing real time with a delay of zero. So we heard 1.2 seconds worth of the sinusoid in a mere one second of time, which means we heard it at five, no, at six fifths, at one and a fifth times the rate. That's to say it's 1.2 seconds divided by one second worth of sinusoid that we heard over one second of time. We heard it, we heard it 1.2 over one times too fast. 1.2 times normal speed. In general, over this amount of time, sorry, if this, if this amount of time is one second, then the amount that we hear is this minus this plus one, oh, plus one second. So this is actually a fifth of a second. So in units, the delay, uh, this, the, what we get is the, 
the transposition is one plus. Okay, one because time is always moving forward. So you, so you all, so if, if you do nothing at all, that you get as much out as you put in. So it is one plus this minus this is the ratio by which the frequency went up. And if you give these th three things names, then you can make a formula. Right. And um, yeah, right. As so, if the Delay time is increasing, the pitch is going down. If the delay time is decreasing, the pitch is going up. By the way, I'm, um, uh, everyone will immediately use the word Doppler to describe this. This is sort of Doppler shift. This is the Doppler shift that corresponds to not the one that you normally hear, which is you're sitting on a park bench and an ambulance goes by. That's the source moving and, and you are the listener. Uh, but And the delay time is the air. It's simply the, the air carrying the sound from the signal source to you. Uh, a, a better metaphor here is um, there's something emitting a sound that's fixed and you're moving because you're changing the delay at which you're listening to it. Uh, but it's at the same time that's Doppler shift and you can hear it if you're running around on a bicycle or, or something like that and, and listen to someone who's stationary blowing a car horn, although that's not as often, that doesn't happen as often as you're hearing the horn stationary instead. Okay, but it's Doppler shift anyway. And this is the formula for Doppler shift, too, if, if you want. You can even, yeah, should I tell you this? <laughs> you can even have a Doppler shift that is so intense that it turns the sound around backwards. So imagine that someone was sitting here talking and what they were saying was so unpleasant that you were running away from that person at twice the speed of sound. You all know the speed of sound, right? It's, uh, well, it's a, it's a foot a millisecond thousand feet per second, roughly speaking. So you're, you're, make, you're hightailing at 2,000 feet per second away from your professor, and as a result, you're hearing everything that the professor is saying backward, because you're actually, I mean, the sound is sitting there in the air waiting for you to hear it, but you're traveling at twice the speed of the sound, and so you're hearing the sound as it's getting further and further away, further and further down the, the delay line. Oh, we can even do that, watch. I can make this delay line do that by saying, we're going to start with no delay at all, and then we're going to run two seconds of sound of, of time away in one second. Let's see if I can do this. And then I say anything at all, like fruitcake, and nothing comes out because I didn't do anything here. Okay. Oh, and anyway, I did that. Okay. Fruitcake, and it didn't work. Oh, I didn't put the comma in. Also, I'm, this is terrible. I, uh, I'm, I'm making all sorts of distortion because I'm being sloppy about the sound. Okay, now let's see. Here's something. Test. Test. What? Test. What? Oh, I have to speak. Oh, I have to, I have to speak, speak before you start running away from me. So you're going to hear it forward and then backward. So you're going to hear it forward and then backward. Right? Backwards. right? Like this. Jelly beans. Like this. Jelly beans. Right? Oh, that didn't work either. What's going on? Okay, let's do yeah. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. All right, I'm not sure how to the time to but it's working. It's the amount of time again, but it's working. I'm changing my voice to go around backward. Oh, and that was feedback. Ignore that. Okay. All right, so that is a transposition factor of minus one. In other words, I'm running the sound around backward by changing, by making the delay line get bigger faster than time is even moving. Okay, sorry. So that was a slight digression. Um, and so anyway, uh, let's, go in, let's go back to this thing. Uh, so to make a very cheap uh, pitch shifter, we would say metronome, I don't know, choose some number of times a second. We're going to do this maybe, maybe 10 times a second. And now everything that I do will be transposed. Okay, transposer, pitch shifter. Very nice. Okay, um, this is kind of a bad pitch shifter, although it's working. Uh, let's make a slightly better pitch shifter by. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a little bad that 
It's a little bad that, uh, that the thing is actually dropping out completely. What you might wish to do is have two delay lines and be cross-fading them so that the sound is continuously working um, when, uh, even when you wish to be changing the delay line. And you can do that, but uh, maybe it would be better before we do that to prepare the example by changing the way we're doing this anyway in the following way. So we'll do a save as. I'm going to switch now, instead of using a line tilde, to using a phaser. To drive the delay time. Oh yeah. And why? Well, it's going to, you're going to be able to figure out why immediately when I show it to you. So now, ugh, go away. Okay, we don't need that anymore. Uh, I'm going to quit doing this for now because this is not going to really work for us. Uh, so for right now, I'm just going to cheat and say multiply by one. That's that's to remind me that later on I'm going to want to control the amplitude again. Uh, but meanwhile, I'm just going to drive the line tilde with a nice phaser, and it's going to have some nice frequency going in. And Oh, yeah. And if I just throw this right in, oh, we don't even have a line tilde. If we just throw this right in, it's going to vary between 0 and 1, which is going to be interpreted as milliseconds down here, which is not so great. So let's, uh, we're going to have to change the range to something reasonable. So, and I will make that be a message box, too. And at this point, I should say that I don't actually know what order this delay write and this delay read are occurring in. Oh, I'm going to change the late name again, just so we're up to date here. Um, so it would be appropriate at this point to add a couple of milliseconds because there could be a 64 sample delay uh, engendered by the fact that this del write might happen before this del read. There's other PD lore that I'm going to avoid telling you about um, how to force that thing to happen right. But right now I'm just going to add a nice delay, which ideally should be at least a couple of milliseconds. Maybe I'll take that away later and see if it hurts us. And now, let's see, we'll go once a second and we'll have it vary by, let's say, 200 milliseconds. And then we will throw a nice sinusoid in there, which we'll listen to. And out comes, you all know it, so it's going to be, if I get it right, it's going to be down a minor, a major third. Ta-da. Ooh, bad example. <laughs> this example, this was too good. Uh, I can change the delay discontinuously by one second, and because there are exactly 440 cycles of this thing in a second. I got away without any discontinuities at all. Don't try this at home. Uh, or let me show you what could go wrong if you did. Let's do 440 and a half. And now we have everything's going great. We're transposing, but there's a discontinuity every second when this phaser resets. While we're here, okay, so I'll go back to 440. Um, to pretend it's working nice. And now, I have a nice continuous control over the pitch shift. And in fact, the shift of the pitch, I can compute, I think, which is, okay, so this number is really a fifth if, if it's in um, seconds. It's 200 milliseconds. So oh, this is interpreting its input as milliseconds. So. What's happening now is the phaser, so the phaser is happening in an amount of time, which is one over this, and it's happening, and it's changing by, by this amount every time, and so the transposition that comes out, the fact, transposition factor is, is one if there's nothing happening at all, as to say when the phaser isn't moving at all, but if it is, if the phaser is going, then the thing is, is being increased or decreased, well, it's being increased by one 
sorry, that's the one which is just oneness because time is passing, one minus the product of the phasor frequency and the phasor amplitude. So in this case, it's one minus one-fifth because this is in hertz and this is in milliseconds. So this is really 0.2, so this is one times 0.2, which is one-fifth. And one minus a fifth is four-fifths, which is down a major third. Okay, now you know how to compute no matter what this is, what it should do. Um, uh, let's see, so this is now one minus two fifths, which is three fifths, which is a major sixth. Oh yeah, let's play the original C here. Uh, okay. So I'm, yeah, yeah. So transposition equals one minus product of phasor frequency and phasor amplitude. Okay, and then you can work that backward any way you want. Now, uh, the next thing is, let's get rid of the clicks. Oh, you don't hear the clicks because I, I fudged it here. But now if I change either this frequency or this, Oh, minus three means the phaser is phasing backwards, of course. Uh, if I change this, I, I, I might be changing the delay time by an amount that's not an integer number of cycles. And as a result, I'm getting clicks, which is kind of bad. So I do have a thing that can continuously change frequency. it's clicking like I'll get out, and that's not something that I want. Another thing about this is that, of course, since the delay is ranging between 0 and, and 121, or whatever this range is, there's going to be delay between when you do something and when you hear it, which could be a problem. Like, for instance, if I start putting my voice in, it, or actually, I'll just click into it. Oh, where is it? There's a delay there. So I've got the transposition okay, but I've got a delay as well. The delay is actually varying between 0 and 121 milliseconds. See, so that's okay. We can make this number be as small as we want. Like, you know, let's make it 10 milliseconds. But then I have to make such extreme. So here's the sinusoid again to try to test this. So now, by the time I give it a decent enough frequency to give it a decent transposition, I've had to drive this value up high because this value is small and the transposition is controlled by this product. And as a result, I have more and more problems, more and more discontinuities per second. OK, so there's going to be a trade-off in pitch shifting between the size of the delay that I'm willing to tolerate and the number of the, uh, and the speed of, of changing it that I'm willing to tolerate. In fact, it's going to become even clearer that this is a trade-off when I fix it so that it doesn't click anymore. So to fix it so it doesn't click anymore, what's a, uh, and this I think has already happened, what's a good way to take a nice phaser and turn it into a signal that will shut up right when the phaser uh, jumps from 1 back down to 0, or in this case jumps from 0 to 1 because I'm running it backwards, right? Uh, there's, there are a lot of possible answers to that. One thing is you could design a parabola that goes from 0 up and then back down to 0 as you go from 0 to 1. Uh, the, the thing that people do most often, that I see anyway, is they uh, use just the, the, the best quadrant they can find of the nice cosine function. Quadrant. Uh, quadrant is the wrong word. So cosine, if you feed it 0, you get 1 out. If you feed it, this is cosine of 2 pi of its input, right? Or, or cosine of its input in cycles. So from minus a quarter to positive a quarter, the cosine goes from 0 back down to 0. That's one half cycle of the cosine, and it's the one half cycle that is positive. There's another half cycle that's negative that comes right after that or before it. So how do I get that nice cycle out of this phaser, or half cycle out of this phaser? This is going from 0 to 1, and I want to go from minus a quarter to a quarter. So in general, you know, if you want to change the range of something, first you decide how big you want the range to be and multiply by that. 
so I want the range to be a half big because it has to reach from minus a quarter to plus a quarter. And then I have to subtract a quarter to get it in the right place. Let me say that more clearly. So this varies from 0 to 1. Now it varies from 0 to a half. And now it varies from 0 minus a quarter to a half minus a quarter. So it goes from minus a quarter to plus a quarter. Now we just run this thing through it, and then we just multiply. Ooh, And it doesn't let us connect because PD is cool. And that times 1 said, I want control inputs there, which I don't anymore. Ta-da. OK? And now we have, let's go back to something reasonable. Tenth of a second uh, hertz. Here's the sound going in, and here's the sound going out. Pretty good. Mm. Would be pretty good if it weren't changing its amplitude all the time, right? Well, there are ways of dealing with this. The way that is maybe the most, well, certainly the way that's easiest to describe to deal with this is the following. Let's see, I'm going to take this, th oh, I'm going to take these things and get them out here. You'll see why in a second. Let's make another one of these things, and let's make it run out of phase from this one, so that whenever this one is quiet, the other one is loud, and vice versa. So how do you do that? Oh, first off, Okay, so this is all good review stuff. How do you make a phaser that's a half cycle out from this phaser? This goes from 0 to 1, so we could always say add a half. That means we go from a half up to 1 and a half. And then if we wrap that, And if we say wrap, then, okay, this, this warrants ex explanation. So this goes from 0 to 1. This goes from a half to 1 and a half. This wrap leaves, leaves the part that goes from a half up to 1, but then the part that goes from 1 up to 1 and a half becomes a, a straight line segment that goes from 0 to a half. And the result, draw, you know, draw this out on a piece of paper if you don't believe me, but the result is just line segments the same as this, but this thing changes value discontinuously whenever this thing crosses a half, because that's when this crosses one, and that's when this wrap changes its mind about how many, what integer to subtract. So now we've got ourselves a nice out-of-phase phaser, and we can use our out-of-phase phaser. Let's see, I need to be compact here. Maybe I just don't have to be so compact. Let's move this stuff out of the way somehow. Don't need that anymore. Let's move this whole thing over. Now, do I have room to have another one of these? Not quite yet. So I'm just going to take this whole thing, including the multiplier, and make another copy of it running out of phase. And I'm going to reuse these number boxes like this, so that I'm multiplying and adding by the same numbers as before. And I could clean this up, but I don't know how. Yeah, I mean, the right thing to do would be to do this and move things around, but maybe this is clearer for now. OK, so now, now we have two, two transposers, and they are one of them is, is jumping when the other one is being stable. Oh, the jumping one, of course, is being faded out, or has been faded out, in order to allow it to jump. So one is always fading in while the other is fading out. And then, oh yeah, so listening to just the first one to start with, it's doing that for us. Let's make it go faster. And the other one, if we listen to it alone, is doing something similar. Whoops, except I have to repeat these things because I didn't put them in the next objects yet. Now, if we add them together, we get 
get something that's not quite as variable in time. It's not perfect, but it's a little bit better. And now, again, we can continuously vary the pitch that's coming out. We can also drop the size of, what's the right word? We can drop the amount that it's, um, it's changing the delay by, but of course in that case we have to move the phaser faster in order to get a fixed transposition. And this, okay, so let's go back to listening to the voice. So this is the classic, this is close anyway to the classic pitch shifting algorithm. So now we're shifting pitch and we have a decently slow, sorry, decently small delay and a decently you know, reasonable transposition. And we can go on like this and so on like that. And we can make silly sounds by you know, transposing up an octave or two, which I won't get into. It'll sound like a chipmunk. So this is now, this is a classic, classic kind of a patch which you could call a pitch shifter. Uh, people frequently call these harmonizers, but the word harmonizer is a brand name, so call it a pitch shifter if you want to be generic. Um, let me just show you where this shows up in the help browser because you might care how to compute appropriate, what's the right word, appropriate um, numbers to stick in the phase and the delay line yourselves and of course I did all that work and if I were a good didactic person I would make you all do this work too but instead I'm just going to show you how you find the answer. You go down to the delay examples and you find the where is it? Delay, a G09 pitch shift and just get this patch out and this is a fabulous patch which well anyway I think it's fabulous which plays plays a nice bell. That's Jonathan Harvey's bell sound there, and lets you transpose it. Any number of well, okay, so it's computed in half tones. So here, the only thing that I've added to what I just showed you, here's the phaser and the wrap and all that, all the good stuff that you just saw. Um, the only, oh, yeah, I did exactly the same thing. Oh, did I? Oh, I did this in the opposite order. Sorry. You, it, work it out. It's the same deal. Uh, the the thing that I changed here was that I actually went to the trouble of figuring out what frequency you would give this phaser in order to to get a transposition that you would specify in half tones, which is which is the well, which is the Western unit for pitch shift. So here, for instance, if I say I want to go up seven half tones, that means I want to play it 1.5 times, well, almost 1.5 times the normal speed. So a ratio, a ratio of a fifth, a musical fifth, is seven half tones. So A, sorry, C, C sharp, D. D sharp E F F sharp G seven seven half tones that's the seven right here and that is a factor of roughly one and a half and how do you figure out what you should feed the phaser well you're going to multiply the phaser by some number which is here called the window that's this number here let's see if I can show it to you in the old patch. This is the help browser. Go over here. So I multiplied the phaser by this number, which was the um, which was the range of delay change. And the product of this and that, once the units were fixed, well, one plus the product of this and this, one minus the product of this and this was the transposition as a factor. So if I give you the transposition as a factor, then you can do that algebra backward. And that will tell you what you should feed the phaser as a frequency if you already also know this delay change, which here I'm calling a window size in milliseconds. So if I set this to 100 milliseconds, say, that's a tenth of a second, 
then to then this number here is a tenth. Here I'm do, I'm correcting to seconds from milliseconds. So here's the delay time in sec. This is the delay change in seconds. And if I wanted to change by this factor, that means I have to add in frequency 0.498 to it. So I subtract one to get that value, 0.498. And then, because rising delay times transpose down, I have to multiply by minus one. Or to put it another way, I have to subtract what I'm going to get here to get the transposition. So I'm going to need to run the phaser backwards to transpose up. So in fact, I have to transpose it by this number times 10 because it's this number divided by this number in seconds. And what's this? This is taking half tones and changing it into a factor. And this number is the logarithm to the base 12. No, sorry, the logarithm to the base 2 of 1 12. You can compute that. You can pull out your pocket calculator if anyone still has one of those and find that out for sure. But I just sort of I didn't do this in my head. I, I pulled out a calculator to get that number. Okay? So this now is one of those that I just showed you, but packaged and engineered in such a way that you can get any desired transposition, which you specify in half tones. And as before, there is this wonderful trade off. Let's listen to it. If I want a fixed. Let's see. Can't change. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to just turn DSP on and off here to, to control this because I can't have the volume control and these things up simultaneously. But now, if I want to do the same thing, oh right, when you hear this, you hear a sort of uh, well, you don't hear the real problem here. The the problem here is going to be that since there are two delay lines that are different by one half of this window size, 50 milliseconds. Everything that happens, and it happens twice, 50 milliseconds apart, which if we were putting voice through this would be kind of an annoying thing. Um, however, if you try to, to fix that by making this delay time itself smaller, then you can watch here, it has to make the thing run faster to get the same transposition. I'll make it be 20, say. And then it has to multiply this by 5. And now, we're getting the same transposition. Boom! That was interesting. But it sounds modulated. Because this thing is changing so quickly that this envelope is raising the and this envelope is raising the amplitude of it this many times a second. That's causing amplitude modulation in the sound, which we hear as uh, frequency aliasing. I guess in the bell, since the bell's in harmonic anyway, that's not such a clear example as I could make out of my voice. Let's do that. Since after all, it's a computer, I can tell it to do anything I want to. Let's just use me instead of the bell now for a minute or two. And now, let's see, we turn it on. And now you're listening to your yeah. professor being transposed. And now if I make a nice big window, you can get a decent, clean sound. Uh, not great, but anyway, it's only changing one and a half hertz now, so it's not terribly messed up. It's still pretty messed up. But anyway, also, if I make if I make speech into it, hello, this is speech. You can hear that uh, everything is replicated twice, a twentieth of a second apart. Actually, clicks are even better than speech. For this. Ugly, messed up clicks coming through because there are two copies of every click because I had to make two of these delay lines because they're cross fading in and out in order to cover for the fact that they're having to change this continuously while this is going on. So then I make this delay time smaller, but then this number has to get higher, and then you get another problem. So that's a decent transposition, but. getting away with this. 
well, this contradicts what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I was able to get, get outrageously small delays here. Yeah, but it's just inharmonic now, although you can't really hear it. You can't hear the inharmonicity. I'd have to play it with a, an instrumental sound, and I don't have an instrument handy. But this would be a problematic setting, too, uh, because this number is too small, which is pushing this frequency too high to be good. So either this number is too large, or this number is too large, and you will never get both of them simultaneously small with such a crazy transposition. People usually use pitch shifters with small transpositions, like a half tone or a quarter tone, or a half tone or a whole tone, like this. And then you can get both this number and this number decently small simultaneously, like maybe this-ish, right? And that's, those are almost kind of reasonable numbers to be feeding in to both of these inputs. But for larger transpositions, you have to either get a ridiculous window size, which is the maximum size of the delay, or a ridiculous frequency of, of interchange, and you will get gradually more and more aliased sounds as you do this. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over the rest of the lore of making cool things out of delay lines, although there are other cool things that you can make out of delay lines. I will just mention the existence of one of them because it's a good thing. You can make artificial reverberators out of delay lines. No one. I do want to say this, and I'm going to close that to get it out of here. Oh, wait. Save and close. I'm going to go back and get my help browser and just go get something that, uh, that shows off a nice reverberator. Just so that you know, it's it can be done. There are library reverberators even in, in PD Vanilla, which you can get. But this one is the pedagogical reverberator, which just shows how you make reverberation. So here's the test input again. Let's see. Oh, yeah, right. This patch is designed in such a way that you, that you make this pitch move around and you and it shuts up when you stop moving the thing. Because, well, you'll see why. Now we're going to reverberate it. And then we're going to hear reverberation. And reverberation sounds like this. And you can guess how I might have done this. It's recirculating delay lines. But the standard recirculating delay line uh, has a bit of a, well, it has a limitation in that um, you either make the delay line real short and then you get frequency response funniness, or you make the delay line really long and then you hear individual echoes. Here, uh, let's use me again. Here, you don't have that trouble so much. So now, let's see, now you have me being reverberated, but you don't so much hear, sorry, <laughs> that's not going to be clear, you don't so much hear individual uh, delays, although this is not a perfect one, as you just hear reverberation, that's to say, sound that's sticking around after the sound, like it would in a real room. And the way you do it, not to put too fine a point on it, <laughs> is you have bunches of delay lines reading and writing in a complicated network which you have to think hard about. And this is all explained in gory, wonderful detail in the book, why this thing works and why it's stable and how you would design it. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just sort of say this exists and go find out how to do it yourself. Or if you just want reverb, just say reverb 2, for instance. And up, oh, uh, let's give it a nice big, I'll give it a nonsensical argument just to make the box big. Now you get a nice reverberator with inputs to control various things about it. Um, and there's a nice help thing on there. This is a nice abstraction which I built just for making a reverberation in case you just want reverberation. And it's there for you to use. Uh, Rev 1 is experimental and strange. And Rev 3 is higher quality than Rev 2. There's a there's a whole collection of, well, there's a collection of free reverberators that you can choose from and get the help window and check them out if you want to find out how to use them. And the theory is in the book. 
and I'm going to skip it because we have many other things to find out about. Let's see, what do I want to do here? Isn't that, we have many other things to deal with than this, and it's now time to stop. And next time I have to start talking about filters, which are the other point of view on delay lines where you, in fact, might find yourself designing delay lines with a specific frequency response in mind.